But it's good to be here with everyone. Um, thank you for all of you that are joining us online. I love the technology that we have today um, between being online and the podcasts and Twitter and all the other ways that we can communicate. I just appreciate how God is orchestrating his church. He said, I'm going to build my kingdom and the gates of hell will not Amen. prevail. Amen. And basically, he's, he is building his kingdom. It's not in the way that we would ever have hoped or dreamed or could have imagined, but God has bigger plans than we even know of. I mean, who would have ever thought that we would have internet and that we would be able to do the things that we do? I mean, when I was growing up, we didn't even have cell phones. Right. You know, now we have like we can't live without our phones. Mm -hmm. We hold our phones, and God forbid we our phones, you know, are out of our hand for like five minutes. We go into panic. Where's my phone? Just like you were saying, where's my phone? It's, like, it's just crazy. But you know, the Bible says this gospel of the kingdom will be preached mm -hmm. to all nations. Mm -hmm. Then the end will come. So this is just another way to get the gospel message out, and we'll see how we proceed going forward. Before we get into the teaching today, I just want to share with you that I have many books that can be available to you, but you have to go to my website, martyflorent.org, and you can order the books there. Um, we, I just brought one book with me for this particular episode. It's Encountering God Through Prayer. This particular book begins with the very basics of how to practice and develop a secret prayer where you enter into your closet, you shut the door, and it's just between you and God. I talk about how to enter in, very practical things in this book, all the way to the very end where I talk about um, contemplative prayer. Um, so this is a very good book for a new beginner and who's wanting to learn how to pray, and even for those of us that need some reminders. So if you want to go to the website, again, it's margieflorent.org, and you can see all the prayers, all the books that we have available. So I'm going to talk today about how to hear God. And as we launch into this uh, message, you know, I do teach a lot on prayer. I have shared a lot on prayer. It's the cornerstone of what we do. But prayer is communication. Prayer is just not, you know... Uh, a monologue, prayer is a dialogue. And so, you know, it's a two-way conversation. It's not just one-sided, meaning we do all the talking. In a lot of my teachings, I, I do talk about how to pray, how to enter into the presence of God, and, and how to communicate with God, how to decree and declare. And, and it's really where we do all the talking. But again, prayer is a two-way conversation. So I think it's very important for us to learn how to hear God, how he speaks, because it helps to create um, that intimacy that we so desire. And I, I was thinking about Moses. The Bible is filled with role models, but Moses in particular is someone that I really um, have thought a lot about because the Bible says in Exodus thirty-three eleven that Moses had what I want, and I believe what many of you want. He had encounters with God, but the scripture says that he knew God face to face as a man speaks to a friend. Amen. So Moses was not only a leader, and he worked miracles through the power of God, but Moses was also a listener. And I believe that we can develop that listening ears, and through teaching, and through ministry like we're going to receive today, we can learn how to develop this listening ear. Amen. And I don't know about you, but that's what I want. Amen. And so, you know, like Moses, we need to experience life's journey in conversation with our Creator. Okay? So we're going to talk about how to hear God. So let's open with our text. Those of you that want to have your Bibles open and see what the Scripture says, John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now notice the scripture says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, that and they follow me. Yeah. One of the greatest benefits of our salvation has to be that of hearing God speak to us personally. Yes. There can be no intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father 
without it. It's the thing that makes it so exciting. It's the thing that makes it so intimate. It's the thing that makes it so personal that we can not only talk to God, but that we can hear his voice, even as Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Okay? But as easy as it, as it is for us to speak to him, the average Christian has a hard time hearing his voice. And that should not be, my friends. And we can develop, like I said, a listening ear. This is not the way the Lord intended it to be. For us not to hear his voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. We are joined to the Lord. We are one spirit with him. He lives right here on the inside of us so we can hear his voice. Again, we just need to develop a listening ear. Learning to clearly distinguish God's voice is invaluable. Wouldn't you agree? Amen. Instead of going through life blindly, we can have the wisdom of God to guide and protect us. The Lord knows exactly how to turn your situation around. Amen. He's ju it's just literally at times a matter of hearing his voice. Mm -hmm. We can hear his voice and we can get the wisdom we need, the direction that we need, the answers that we need. God will speak to us and give us his direction. It's never the Lord who is not speaking, but it's us who are not hearing. And we're not doing it on purpose. You know, it's because of a lack of knowledge of the word of God and a lack of teaching and a lack of awareness of his voice. Jesus made some radical statements about hearing his voice in John 10, 2 through 5, he was speaking about himself as the shepherd of the sheep and only the only way to enter the sheepfold. And it says here in this verse, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Mm -hmm. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls to his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. Why? Because they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. Now, I wouldn't be Margie Florent in this season and this time if I didn't talk about my dog Milo. <laughs> And Milo's a little celebrity on all my social media pages, and everybody knows who he is. And yes, he is as cute as a button. And yes, cat people, we dog people, are just as fanatic about the cat people. <laughs> but I have to tell you the honest to God's truth. I put him in this little daycare a few days a week, three days a week, so that he could hang out with his doggy friends. And he loves it. He's got all the friends that are his favorite are usually the girls. Noel and Chloe and he just he seems to get along better with the girls and and they told me one day they said you know when you call and they have me on speaker and you say hi it's Margie I'm here to pick up Milo it's so funny they said because he jumps up he runs over to them and he's ready to go awesome. why because he knows my voice my dog knows my voice why does he know my voice? He knows my voice because he spends a lot of time with me. And he knows my, in, my the way I speak and the inflection in my tone of voice. And he knows my voice. And that's the same way it can be with you and I. As we get to know Jesus and as we spend time with him and spend time in his word, we can develop that listening ear whereby we know his voice voice. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go through my Christian walk blindly not knowing his Amen. voice. Yeah. You know, there's even a scripture that's coming up in my spirit, give us this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to hear from God daily mm -hmm. in a consistent right. way. Amen. Now, obviously, we're going to get into a lot of this today. He's not always going to speak in spectacular ways. Right. One of the basic ways he speaks 
is first of all we're going to get into this is through his word Amen. so yes. if we don't have an Amen. inner witness or we don't have that 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 particular answer that we need we can go directly to the word of god and we Amen. can hear his voice right. yes. but again i want to walk with god I want to be like Moses, Amen. who knew God face to face and had a listening ear. And we're going to find out in all of these episodes that God does speak, and we just need to listen. We're going to yes. find out that he does speak, and he cares about the, the smallest things to the very biggest decisions in our lives. He is so intimate with us. The scripture Amen. says he, he's so intimate with us that he knows how many hairs we have on our head. Amen. And for some of you, so how many hairs you don't have on your head. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Okay? But God cares about everything in our lives and I'm very excited yes, about the direction of this particular conference. Okay? Notice he said in verse 3, his sheep hear his voice. Amen. Now, as I, as I continue in the next, in all of these teachings, I just want you to keep in mind, don't just listen to what I'm saying to you. Listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. What is God saying to you about what I'm teaching Good. in these episodes? Mm -hmm. You have to listen to your heart. Because again, like we said, he is very intimate with you. He knows everything in your life. Mm -hmm. He's a very prophetic God. And he wants to answer all of your questions. So notice the scripture says, he, his sheep hear his voice. It didn't say his sheep can hear his voice or should hear his voice. It says his sheep hear his voice. Amen. He made the empathetic statement that his sheep do hear his voice. It's not what Jesus said that is wrong. All true believers do hear the voice of God. Amen. But sometimes, and you know this is true for all of us, we just don't recognize it. And what I've learned in hearing the voice of God, and I'm, I'll be 64 in April. Actually, I decided I wasn't going to tell my age anymore, so i got to stop that. But anyway, what I've learned with walking with God 40-something years is, it takes time, it takes practice, Amen. it takes awareness, Amen. it takes discipline, Amen. it takes developing your human spirit. Yes. But we can recognize what God is saying to each and every one of us. Yes. So let's think about it. Radio and television stations, they transmit 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes. But we only hear them when we turn on the receiver and tune in. Oh yeah, that's right. good. Right. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yes. Failure to hear the signal doesn't mean the station isn't working. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Even like our phones, our cell phones, technology works on a system of geographically separated zones called cells. Each mm -hmm. cell has its own base station. And it produces and, and admits radio waves. When a call is placed from a cellular phone, a signal is sent from the cell phone antenna to that cell's base station antenna. Are you listening? Yes. You know where I'm going today. Yeah. Okay? We can have no signal, end up in a dead zone or in an airplane like we've all had, and thus have no service or drop calls. Mm -hmm. It's not the cell phone towers problem mm -hmm. it's the receiver it's oh, the phone yeah. likewise god is constantly transmitting his voice to his sheep yes listen he loves you it's not his will that you be in the dark amen he loves you you are fearfully and wonderfully made, Amen. and he has created you a spirit being, you. and he wants you to hear what he has to say to you. Amen. Even in the depths of your heart, in the quiet seasons of the night, when you lay in your bed, and you're worried, and you're fretful, and you're anxious, and you're thinking, and thinking, and thinking, God wants to speak to you even in the midst of the darkness. Yes. Listen, if God can rescue Jonah out of a belly of a whale, he can certainly speak to us in our journey in life. Amen. 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 Are you listening? Yes. And these words that we hear from God, they encourage us. They strengthen us. 
They give us the kick in our butt to keep moving on and to keep Come going on. forward in our calling and in our destiny. Yes. And I feel this very strongly in my heart. I feel like we're living in desperate times, duh. Yes. But we really are living in desperate times. And there's never been a day like this day where we really need to hear the voice of God for ourselves individually. Yes. And you might not like what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway because I've been saying it to my close inner circles. But we had a we've we've come, we've had a major prophetic move, and I believe we've needed the prophetic and we've needed this move of God. But what do we do when we don't have a prophetic word from another person speaking into our lives? Right. Right. Mm. Right. Are you listening? Yes. And I think what's happened to the body of Christ, and I have this burden in my heart, is that we've become too dependent on man and not dependent Amen. on the yes. Holy Spirit oh, of God, yes. who is our leader, our teacher, our guide, our strengthener, our advocate, our standby. And I think sometimes we've even... Uh, veered away from the truths of God's word because we're expecting um, um, some spectacular kind of a guidance like a feather dropping from the air or dust and uh, ending up on our clothes or whatever the case may be yeah. now I've had things like that happen to me where you know for a season it was the strangest thing but I saw God in it and I kept seeing dimes everywhere I went. And it was a season in my life where God was saying, your steps are being ordered and established by me. Yeah. And I said to somebody one time, what do you think that is? I mean, you know, what is that? Yeah. And he said, it's just a sign and yeah. a wonder. Yeah. Yeah. One time I had a situation where I was preaching in a church. And I, and, uh, I didn't even tell anybody about it until like a month later. Because I think sometimes if we tell people too much... People that never have, quote, signs and wonders get discouraged and they think God doesn't love them, mm -hmm. which couldn't be further from the truth. Right. Right. But I had a situation one time, I was preaching in a church, and, uh, and I'd be honest with you, I didn't even believe in this. I knew it was happening, but I didn't really believe it, and uh, you know, I didn't believe it. So I, I opened up my purse before I got up to speak, and there was all this gold dust in my purse. <laughs> Then I looked at it and I said, it wasn't my highlighter. <laughs> my highlighter's in my makeup bag, <laughs> not my bag bag. Yeah. And then I got up to speak and when I sat down, there was this gold substance all over my leg. Well, what is that? It's a sign and a wonder. Right. Did you get up and tell everybody you had gold dust? No, I got up and I preached the word. Amen. What's gonna strengthen people? Come What's on. gonna establish people? Signs yeah. and wonders? No, it's the Word of God that is the foundation. Hearing the Word of God, doing the Word of God, understanding the Word of God. Because we're living in perilous times. We're living in a time where the winds are coming, like Matthew 7 says. The storms are beating against the house. And I'll be honest, a lot of people who are dependent on signs and wonders, they're not making it. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead. That's right. Go ahead. Come on. They're not making it. And now I hear people saying leaders, which is really encouraging. Leaders are saying, well, we need to get back to the basics of the Word of God. Right. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> get back to the basics. Well, the foundations of the Word of God. What are the foundations? The foundational truths are the most powerful truths. Who we are in Christ. Do an in Him study someday. You know, in Him, in whom, in Christ. Amen. Yes. Who we are? Who are we in Christ? Okay. What about the authority of the believer? Amen. Yeah. Yes. What about why is there so much power in the name of Jesus? Yes. Okay. What about you know the Holy Spirit and who He is in His yes. role in the church? The what about yes. faith? What about yeah. what is faith? What is confession? Yeah. What about the words yes. of our mouth yeah. and the meditation yeah. of our yeah. heart? Yeah. Yeah. What about you know calling those things and being not as though they are? We've gotten away from it. Yeah. What? Yeah. Signs and wonders. So that was my little rant for the morning. But that's why I believe God is bringing us back. Yes. Yes. He wants us to return to our first love. Yes. Return to hearing his voice on our own. Amen. Come on. And you can hear his voice because the scripture said, my sheep yes. hear my voice. Amen. He is the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. The Lord is your shepherd. He's wanting to guide you and lead you. Yes. And I also have found that in the movement that I believe we're coming out of and we're coming into a new era, mm -hmm. because what God is doing is he's building one movement upon another movement upon another yes. movement. So we had the word of faith and the foundation of scriptures, the word, word, word. Then we got into the prophetic. And he's going to take the word mm -hmm. and the spirit. Yes. And he's bringing us into a new era. Yeah, People talk about, well, we, we have, it's, you know, there's a new thing happening. Well, I believe the new thing is, the word and the spirit Amen. coming together and Amen. us moving yes. into yes. this together. Yes. And so sometimes I also think, and I'm going to bring this out, that we've put too much pressure on man to hear from God. It's like the children of Israel. They were outside the tent door and Moses was in, in the presence of God and they were waiting for God to speak. Right? 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 And I think that's where the body of Christ, where... We have become crippled. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Because the sheep who should be hearing God's voice, who know the voice of God, who have more teaching than any other generation on the face of this earth, yes, the yes. sheep mm -hmm. are sitting in, in audiences and they're waiting for a prophetic word. Now we can't meet right now together. So now they're online waiting for some prophet Jesus. to call them out. And have a word for them. Whereas, you know, and I feel that the Lord is saying, he said, listen, I don't despise prophecy. But I'm telling you, when the Lord doesn't get the glory, he starts taking his hand off of something. That's right. That's right. He starts taking his hand off of it. Taking my hand off of this. Taking my hand. And it's time for my church to grow up. Because I want my church. I am building my church. And I need my church to get ready to put on the full armor of God. And I need my church to grow up into him, as Ephesians says, in all things, with him being the head we're the body. Now it's time for the body to fine tune yes. their spirit, start hearing from God on their own. Right. And what I learned about hearing the voice of God is he'll start at times on small things and then he'll progress in bigger things. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, so let's go on. So likewise, God is constantly transmitting his voice to his sheep, but few are turned on and tuned in. Most Christians are busy pleading with God in prayer to transmit. When the problem is with the receivers, how many of you have done it? Amen. How many of you have ever prayed worry prayers? Oh, yeah. I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried. What about this? What about this? I'm worried, worried, worried. You pray yourself into a ditch. Whereas the scripture says if we would just be still and know that he is God and know that my sheep hear my voice. Amen. That's where I believe that prayer of, of, of soaking was good for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But then again, we took it to extremes. Mm -hmm. yeah. People were laying on floors in churches soaking while the enemy is just running around the church creating havoc mm -hmm. in their community. Mm -hmm. And we should have been taking authority. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand my heart? Yes. It's yes. called balance. Yes. We have to have balance. Mm -hmm. So I think at times we do need to be still and know that he is God. And we'll talk about this as we proceed. That stillness and that reflection and that contemplation on the presence of God and the face of God and even having a scripture we're meditating on will help us to hear his voice. Yes. Because again, we're too busy. Some people or believers have developed their receivers so that they can not only hear God, but this is the part I like. But enjoy friendship with him because of the level of communication that happens in that relationship with him. Here's something that happened to me recently. I'm redoing my house. And and I, I like it. I'm kind of, um, I don't mean it's a negative way, but I'm a little OCD-ish. And I like everything to be in order and everything's got to match and everything has to be lined up. And I had this one room that I was finishing and I really wanted to get a particular kind of bench in front of the bed. It's a guest bedroom. And I, I took my old ottoman, you know, from my old yeah. furniture, and I put it in front of the bed. I thought, well, I could just use that. But you know what? The size wasn't right. It yeah. was too square, too boxy, and the color was just okay. So I, I had a desire in my heart. Everybody mm -hmm. say desire. 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 I had a desire in my heart. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, I just really, you know, and I talked to God like a friend in my heart. I said to God, Lord, I really need a, a different autumn in here. And so I went to drop my dog up at his little playgroup place. And I just, oh, I was picking him up. And I had a desire. I was going to pick him up. I had a desire. Mm -hmm. Not a voice. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into this. Mm -hmm. Not a voice. Right. Everyone say desire. Desire. And it was a desire like a thought that came up into my mind. Mm -hmm. And the desire and the thought kind of, I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, some things are better caught Come on. than taught. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as I'm teaching, think about the times this has happened to you where you heard God's voice. Right. And now you didn't recognize it, but you thought, wow, that, that was God speaking to me. And it'll be very encouraging to you. So I had this desire and then a thought, go to TJ Maxx. All right, where's there a TJ Maxx? I know that there's one over by Bridgewater Commons Mall. So I, I went over to TJ Maxx, pulled up. Now I was on a hunt, okay? I was on a hunt. And I start looking at the furniture and looking at the furniture and looking at the furniture and looking at the furniture. And I found this one bench but, you know, it just wasn't quite right. The wood wasn't quite, quite right. It didn't fit perfectly. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for. But I was willing, you know, to compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's better than that square golden thing in front of the bed. <laughs> so, but I kept looking. And I kept looking. Lo and behold, I came across this bench, the perfect size, perfect wood. The dark blue went with the walls and went with the couple pillows that were on the, on the bed. And I can't even begin to tell you it was only $99. You couldn't get a better price than that. Okay? I am telling you that was God. Not only that, but I went alongside the other side. I found two perfect pictures on a carpet that went into the bathroom right next to the guest room. I am telling you, and I did not spend a lot of money. And I got the desires of my heart. Yes, exactly. And I told my, my friends, I'm like, you just can't make this stuff yeah, up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Now, what was that? That was the Lord. Amen. He wanted to, to bless me. Right. He loves me. He yes. loves you. Yes. He wanted to give yes. me the desire of my heart. Yes. yes, God cares about those little things. Yes. He really does. Yes. And what that showed me is intimacy, yes. friendship. Yes. But it's tuning into him and hearing his voice and knowing that when I had that yeah. prayer request, what I would really like, that's really the prayer of faith. Yeah. I would really like to have a bench that goes, and the Lord just led me right there. You mm -hmm. can't make this stuff up. It's friendship yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. First thing we need to do is fix our receivers. Believe that God is already speaking and start listening. Mm, now, when did you hear his, that desire? When did you get that thought? When did that come to you? When I was driving in my car. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be when you're on your knees. Because our life with him should be a continual prayer and a continual back and forth. And just a continual flow of intimacy with him. Amen. You ever notice these couples that are really in love? The ones that are really in love and really like to be with each other. Do you notice how they start to, they, you can pick up on each other's vibe. You can pick up on their thoughts. You can pick up on, you just, you just know each other. Right. I had something happen to me with my one daughter one time. We were sitting together and we were doing something. And, and this, is, this, is, this is one of them. And I, she thought something and I answered her. <laughs> She's like, Mommy, I never asked you. I go, oh, my God. I, think I, heard, you say, I heard your thought, and I literally answered her. Yeah. What is that? We had been spending a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. We had developed a friendship beyond just mother and daughter. Mm -hmm. We spent so much time together. It was like, you see, the spirit realm is very real. Yes. Okay? So you think about heaven. They say in heaven, I've never been there. But I've heard <laughs> from people who have allegedly been to heaven, and I believe, I believe some of them. But they say in heaven that you don't even have to talk. You just think, and you yeah. can communicate. Well, see, my friends, we are in the Spirit already if we are born-again children of God. Amen. We walk in the Spirit. Yes. Yes. 
And so right. therefore we can live and move and have our being in the yes. spirit, yes. just like the scripture says. Yes. So we can pick up yes. on the frequency of God. Yes. And it doesn't always have to be when we're on our knees. Yes. When right. we're you know, even when we're busy talking, talking, talking to God, talking to God, talking to God, talking to God. Have you ever noticed if you ever went on a fast? I don't know. I have a hard time with fasting. I just really do. <laughs> but have you ever noticed <laughs> when you go on a fast that you don't really hear from God? Some of you, maybe some of you do. A lot of times you go on a fast, you can't hear from God. It's so hard to hear from God. But when you get out of that fast and you got out of that season of a lot of prayer, you're just taking a shower or driving in your car and then God starts speaking. Well, what happened? You crucified the flesh, you put down the flesh, you brought your body under subjection, you built yourself up on your most holy faith by praying in the spirit. You know, you prayed, and so it made you more fine-tuned, more aware. You were a little, you know, hungry, and you know, your, the, your voice was speaking a lot, and maybe that's why you couldn't hear the voice of God, but when you started to eat again, you know, it's like, oh, I can hear God again. How many of you have ever noticed that? But yes. we're in the spirit. We walk in the Spirit. Right. So I want you to begin to have more of a mindset of, I can hear from God. I do walk in the Spirit. Amen. This walking in the Spirit is not for the super, super, super spiritual, quote, unquote, whatever that means, person. It's for everyone. Yeah. Right. They that are led by the Spirit of God, yes. what? Are the right. sons yeah. of God. Are you a son? Are yeah. you a daughter of God? then the scripture says you can be led and are led yes. by the Spirit of God. Amen. Okay? So we need to believe that God is already speaking and start listening. However, like I said, it takes time, development of the human spirit, biblical teaching, effort, and focus. Hmm. But this is the thing. This is the thing. A lot of us are too busy. Like if you ask... If you ask your friends, what, uh, how, what, you know, how are you doing? I'm just so busy. We're all just so busy. How are you doing today? I'm just so busy. So what have you been up to? I've been, I've been so busy. I'm just so busy. I'm busy. Listen, those of you that are not on the East Coast and are in other parts of the United States or abroad, you know, we live here in the Northeast, right? That's where I live. And if you notice, we all dress in black. We drive black cars. You know, we just like those dark colors. Yeah. There's just something about us. You go right. to other places like Florida, and everything's colorful and flowery and right. yellow and, mm -hmm. you right. know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, here on the East Coast, we are very busy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very busy creatures. Mm -hmm. We drive fast, we do everything fast, we have a schedule, we have a list. We're just busy, 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 busy. Mm -hmm. And we do things quick. And I think that that's a good thing. But if we're not careful, mm. it can be a bad thing. Yep, yeah. that's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Right. Oh, yeah. So I think what we need to do, all of us need to do, wherever you are, is we need to slow down. We're going to begin to develop our human spirit and fine-tune our spirit and fine-tune our receiver. We need to be still and know that he is God. Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, which seems to be a theme in these episodes, he says he leads me beside still waters. Yes. It's in that stillness mm -hmm. that he can speak. Otherwise, I'm telling you, we're drowning out the voice of God. Mm -hmm. We're like, you know, we're like, we're like, you know, Martha. Yeah, we're so busy, 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 busy. I have to watch that. Mm -hmm. We're so busy, busy, busy that we're not like Mary. What was Mary doing? She was not only sitting at the feet of Jesus, and I didn't see this till these last two days when I was putting this together. She, the scripture says she was listening. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I tell you, I just chills. <laughs> she was listening yeah. to what he said. When I teach on prayer and intimacy with God and closet praying, I, I, I tell people, use your spiritual imagination. Imagine that you're standing, standing in front of him or kneeling before him like Martha and Mary, like Mary was doing. But I, I was reading this, and the Spirit of God highlighted the part, listening. Yeah. Yes. 
Prayer is a two-way conversation. She was listening. Okay? Okay. So, let's, let's begin our teaching. I'm going to teach for a little bit longer, and then we'll take a break. Is that okay with everyone? Mm-hmm. That sounds good. John 16, 12 through 15. Jesus said, I, I've got to tell you, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. I mean, you think about everything he was teaching them. They had no concept of the new birth, no concept of the resurrection. They did not have the Holy Spirit given to them because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Spirit wasn't there to lead, guide, direct, to to enlighten, to give them revelation. All I have to say is thank God for the Holy Spirit. Without him, we would be powerless, fruitless. We'd be... We wouldn't have the strength. Yeah. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to pray like we ought to pray. We would. We just would not be where we are today. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. That's why when Jesus said, I want you to tarry at Jerusalem, do not do anything till you be endued with power from on high. Yes. You've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. You can receive. It's for you. So he said... I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. <clears throat> How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will what? First thing he said, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, whatever he hears, right. who's he hearing from? Father. The Father. Our Heavenly Father knows what things you have need of. Mm-hmm. What? Before, Before you ask Him. Yes. Amen. But whatever He hears, He will speak. Amen. I just need to see. I've got to right. stop. Just a second. That's right. He's hearing from the Father. That's right. Yes. And the Holy Spirit's the one that's here. He's the agent of God on the earth. Amen. That's why we need to get to know him. And we're going to get into this. Understand that we have another person living on the inside of us. That's right. Yes. yes. Sounds freaky, but we do. <laughs> Who is that person? It's the person of the Holy Spirit. That's right. He's not a mere influence. He's not a cloud. Yeah. He's not a, a glory, something that bump, that appears on your arms when you feel his presence. Right, right. right. My friends, God said, I will dwell in them. That's right. Amen. I will walk in them. Amen. I will be their God. They will be my people. Know ye not that you are what? The temple. The sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. So with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, there's not some crisis and competition going on in heaven. They're all in perfect harmony and unity. And we have everything we need. He said, whatever... Yes. He hears, he will speak. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yes. Father, I just yes. thank you. Yes. Amen. I thank you for that thank time you, you spoke to me and warned me, mm-hmm. prepared me for the rough road that was coming in my life. Mm-hmm. Thank I thank you, Father, that you spoke, the Holy Spirit heard, and you spoke it into my spirit. And I thank you for all those that are listening, that you've done the same thing mm-hmm. for them. Yes. Because your word says, my sheep... Yes. Hear my voice and the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. You won't follow the voice of a stranger because you're a true son and daughter of God. The enemy would like you to think that you're hearing from the devil, but it's really been the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking inside of you. It's a voice of calm, it's a voice of peace, it's a voice of knowing. It's a voice of calm. You're hearing his voice. And you've been afraid to step out. The Holy Spirit saying, step out and I'll give you grace into the new thing that I'm calling you to step into. It's a new thing. You already, It's already begun. Some of it's already taking place in the natural. But God wants you to step in and step out into more. And you have hesitated There's been a hesitation, and you've stepped back. I think there's a scripture that says, He that believes will not hesitate. There's been a hesitation. 
God's saying, I, I've been speaking to you. Now it's time. And I, I see something turning around for you. It's going to be a great big turnaround. And then the Lord says there's going to be a performance of those things that have been spoken to you by the Lord. Just don't hesitate. Right. It's okay to wait. It's okay to be still because I'm a waiter. I, I really like to wait. I don't go in fast. As a matter of fact, you know how you are, and so does God. He knows your personality because he gave it to you. Right. So he knows that if you're a waiter, he'll start talking to you three months ahead of time. Mm. Come on. Mm. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> and then you might be married to somebody that moves really quick, and then you slow him down, and maybe you need to speed up a little bit. Sometimes I wait yeah. really, really long. Yeah. And it turns into procrastination. But waiting is not a bad thing. Right. Don't wait too long. You already heard. Whoever that's for, you could receive that. Because you know it's for you. Because if you listen to what I'm saying, there's something on the inside of you that's that's, that's saying that's for me. Yeah. You know, when I used to listen to Brother Hagen speak, teach, I did not even just listen to what he was saying. I was listening to what God was saying in me, yeah. what was for me. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know who else I do that with? I do that with Joyce Meyer. Mm -hmm. And I listen to all the tapes that I always listen to. I listen to two, three, four, five, five, six, seven times, not just once. Yeah. Because you'll miss things. Just, oh, sure. So even Joyce, there's a, a, a series that I'm listening to now, and that's not just what she's saying. She'll give a story about something, and I've got to speak to me about my story, mm -hmm. yes. your story. That's yes, right. My sheep hear my voice. Give me this day my daily bread. Yeah. Amen. He's been speaking to you. You need to listen and obey. You know, when God spoke to, I'm stuck here again. When God spoke to Peter, Jesus spoke to Peter, he was in the boat. See, you like to be safe, don't we all? Especially the older we get. We all like to be safe. Or stay in the boat. Staying in the boat. Staying in the boat. And the boat's getting old. The boat needs to be painted. And you're not even supposed to be in the boat anymore. God has a new boat for you. And it may look like a ship. If you don't step out of the boat, you're not going to get into your ship. It may even be a cruise ship. And you may find in that cruise ship, it'll be like you'll have more rest than where you are right now. Oh, I know what the scripture is. It's coming up. He that hesitates is lost. We've got we to Google that and find it. Yeah. So stop hesitating. Yeah. Because, you know, you're going to enter into that cruise ship when you step out of that boat. And you're going to step, in, step into abundance and you're going to have more rest. Somebody said to me recently, and I can't say who it is because it's somebody that's very close to my heart. This person said to me, I'm frustrated. You know, you know and sometimes... As a parent or as a leader or a mentor, you just kind of step back and you got to let them just figure it out. Mm -hmm. And you know why they're frustrated, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they're just not ready to hear it. Yes. <laughs> right? Right. So you step back and just waiting because you know they're stubborn. Yeah. I'm the only one that has, has people like that in my life. <laughs> you know? And you know, because as a parent, or as a leader, as a mentor, you just know. You could you don't even need a revelation. Mm. Right. Go ahead. Because we I think sometimes we super spiritualize things, you know? And you don't even need a major revelation. Right. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. And then I just start saying, Well, maybe do you think maybe yes. that you're called to be an intercessor? <laughs> and because you've had that prophesied to you before, haven't you? Right. And maybe, you know, now that you have this change in your life, things have changed. You can't do things the old way anymore. Come on. Things have changed. Do you think maybe you should be like an Aaron and a her and hold up the arms of your husband who's called in ministry and be partnering with him in the secret place and help give birth? to his, the ministry that the two of you are called to? 
Right. You know, prayer opens up the door for God to work. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you start praying in the Holy Ghost for your ministry or for the call or your journey, your destiny, things begin to take form and things begin to happen and develop in the spirit before it ever comes into the natural. Right. I'm frustrated. Well, do you think maybe you need to get your head out of the book and get your head and your focus in on Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your destiny and your purpose? I'm frustrated. Do you know that that frustration is God speaking to you? I don't have that like in scripture for it, but I just know. For those of us here, we're all mothers and fathers, you know. That frustration, and you know, is God speaking to you. Uh, when I learn something, if an anointing is off of something, or I'm frustrated, or I'm unhappy, it's not always in the soul. That's right. Right. It's in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. This yes. teaching is really good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. You, you know, a, a man prepares his way, but yeah. the Lord directs. Right. Yes. 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 Right. Go on. Listen, one time, not one time, in a season, God told me to shut everything down, stop traveling, and he wanted me to spend time with him. Number one, I needed healing, because I had just been through a traumatic event. And number two, he just wanted to do something new. Yeah. <laughs> Is it possible that God wants to do something new? Yes. yes. Do you know that the, the people that are over 60... God is lighting a fire underneath those that are over 60. It's not a time for you to, re to retire. It's a time for you to refire. Are you kidding me? I don't get that. I could never retire personally, unless God said, okay. I, I could never retire from ministry. Right. Look at Joyce. She's 73. Yeah. Things change. You have to make adjustments. You know, you can't travel, you know. Four times a month, you slow things down because God's a God of order mm -hmm. and he, he understands our frame. Mm -hmm. He remembers that we are dust mm -hmm. and that the things we used to do in our 30s, mm -hmm. we can't do in our 60s. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think what happened to Catherine Coleman, I think she burned her body out. Yeah. See? And I don't think the Lord was requiring that much of her. She could have stepped back a little bit and it could have strengthened her physical heart. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But I remember I was in this season of a lot of prayer for those two reasons I mentioned. And then I, I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. I mean, the kids would get on the bus stop, put them to the bus, and I'd go up in my office and I was spending time with God Major. And then after about, now you got to really hear with your heart what I'm going to say here. After um, several months of that, I just started, don't misunderstand me, but I started getting bored. I started feeling like something's going on, like there's an emptiness. While I'm praying, I'm you know in this presence, in this fullness of joy, I know all the teachings, I teach on it, what's going on? I just felt something different. In here, not here, in here. And I just was like, what is it? Lord, come on, what is it? And then I had a desire. Everybody say desire. desire. Had a desire. And the desire had a thought. Mm -hmm. And the desire, and then the thought said, do you remember that manuscript that you started 10 years ago? Oh, boy. On the art of intercession? <laughs> and it's in your attic? Wow. <laughs> I was like, an idea. Yeah. Desire, thought, idea. The idea said, yeah, I remember that. I, I remember that. What is that? It was communication. Right. I'm, he was transmitting something. I wasn't receiving it. And so he just went like this. I'm just going to let her get bored. <laughs> I'm just going to let her get frustrated. Even though, listen, this is good teaching. Even though she's doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Yeah. You're right. She's doing the right thing. She's right. praying. Mm -hmm. She's seeking me. Mm -hmm. right. But I got something else I want her to do with her time. Mm -hmm. Day in and day out. Mm -hmm. okay. That's going to bear fruit for later on. Mm -hmm. My sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. 
They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. I want to build my kingdom. We're co-laboring together with him. There's something else he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. Went into my attic, dug out the manuscript, and I started writing it before there was, like, computers. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I started implementing it. Yeah. And, you know, I just set up praying all those hours a day seeking God, although I did pray in and out. Mm -hmm. I got frustrated. And he ate jelly beans when I didn't have that writer's, that he got the writer's block. And so they're okay, 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 I had the jelly beans. But then when I would get into that river of that flow, then I would be writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. You know, there's an anointing in writing books. Yep. Yeah. He makes my tongue like what? The pen of a ready writer. Right. And your books will go places you can't go and get into right. the hands of people that would normally not be able to hear you. Right. So I wrote my first book. Awesome. But that was being led by the Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You see the difference? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on, and I think we're going to take a break. He will speak, and he will tell you things to come. It was God's will that I write that book, and that was first of, I don't know, eight. We have another one coming out. Pray that God gives us the right publisher. Contend. Yes. Stewarding the hearts and destiny of our children through prayer. Yeah. Here's another thing about being led by the Spirit. I wrote the book. It's all done. Put the ISBN number. That's the only thing you got to put in there. Perfectly edited. Perfectly. Because I get help in the areas that I'm weak. Mm -hmm. Perfectly edited. All right? The manuscript, Lord, what about it? Flat line. <laughs> <laughs> What's a flat line? Neutral. What's a neutral? No go. Wait. Not a flat line. Flat line. Neutral. Wait. But Lord, the body of Christ needs this book. Don't yeah. you understand? <laughs> kids. It's the kids. It's about the kids. There's never been a day like this day. The generation. Yeah. This is a generation. They saw the Twin Towers come down. They see shooting in the schools. Don't you get it? Flat line. <laughs> to everything there is a time mm -hmm. yes. and a purpose mm -hmm. under heaven. Yes. That's right. Yeah. God knows the needs. He knows how to get the job done and when to get the job done and how to get the job done. Wow. Sometimes I think we jump ahead of God. Yeah. Because of need. I see a need. I see a need. I see a need. And God's just going, not now. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? <laughs> yes. Yep. Do you know that in the book of Acts, that there was a time when, when the apostles were going to go somewhere, mm -hmm. and the Holy Ghost forbid them not to go. That's right. Yes. That's right. But Margie, the Bible says, go into all the world and mm -hmm. preach the gospel. The Holy Spirit forbid them not to go. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Two and a half years later, mm -hmm. desire, mm -hmm. desire said. Well, you're doing a podcast with charisma. Chari oh, I, I don't want to say too much, but wouldn't it be wonderful if we could partner with that particular ministry and they could publish the new book? Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not saying it's going to happen. We haven't submitted the manuscript, but I don't know. Right. A man plans his ways, the Lord directs his step. Maybe the timing, maybe the publisher. God only knows. All we have to do is, the Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered and established by God. If God says, wait, if you have a flat line, if you have a neutral, and you know, and you're looking on the inside, which we're going to be talking about how to do that, and you're just more conscious of the inside, the inside of you saying, flat line, wait, then you wait. Because, listen, my friends, your heart knows things your head doesn't know. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So your head may be saying one thing, and then your heart's saying a completely, something completely different. Uh -huh. Right. So you just talked about flatline and waiting, but you also talked to somebody else about getting out of the boat. 
See? My sheep hear my voice. You know what he's saying to you. Aren't you glad we have the Holy Spirit? Okay. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said, he will take of mine and declare it to you. Number one, he will show you ahead of time things to come. Amen. Yes. One time I was standing in my laundry room. Isn't it amazing the places that God speaks? <laughs> the place I hate the most. <laughs> you know, that's actually a good point now that you said it. Yeah. The place I hate the most. Yeah. I actually had a sign in my laundry room when the kids were little. It's out of the Amplified. Do everything is unto the Lord. He sees what you do in secret. He will reward you. Because I just hated doing laundry. You know, you know, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. like a, it's like a thankless job, especially as moms. And then the kids use the towel once. Then they throw it in the laundry. And I'm standing in the laundry room. Just as clear, and we're going to talk about this, as a man speaks to a friend. I heard audibly right here. Audibly. And I'm not going to tell you what it was because it's personal, very personal. But he said, da 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 And it was like a thunder in my spirit. It was a voice, a real voice. It wasn't the voice of my human spirit. It was the voice of God, the, the authoritative voice. You know, whenever you get that authoritative voice, that usually means hold steady. I've got you. I've got you in the palm of my hand. I'm just letting you know now. But rough road is up the road ahead of you. But I've got you, and I'm warning you, and I'm telling you, and don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Yes. He warned me of something, literally. I would say 15, 16 years later, I'd have to put a time frame on it and look at my journal. Wow. It came to pass. <laughs> Did you make it come to pass? No, I'm standing in the laundry room doing the laundry. What am I going to do? Stop doing the laundry? You can't make this stuff up. I'm just going to let God be God in my life. Amen. I'm not going to try to make it happen. That's why I think happened in the, in, with prophecy. So many people got all kinds of prophecies. Yeah. And I think some prophecies came out of people's own spirits. Right. Come on. And because they felt that he needed to perform. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, oh, this is a prophet's coming to town. Now he's got to perform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you may not think of this, and now he's getting, getting, getting offerings, and he's getting paid, and he better perform. Well, what if the prophet got up and gave a simple teaching? People wouldn't like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people felt pressure to perform, mm -hmm. and then they give out all these prophecies that never came to pass. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I said that. Do you? It's <laughs> true. It's true. I don't know how it flowed into my message. But anyway, he'll show you ahead of time things to come. Mm -hmm. And then Brother Hagin said this one time, and then after this third point, we'll take a break. Brother Hagin said one time, he said, there's going to be times in your life, and we've all seen it, where you are unconsciously led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You don't even know you're being led by the Spirit, but you're being, he's unconsciously, you just are being led by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Okay. You cast your cares on him. You have a posture before him of clean hands, a pure heart. He doesn't have to pull you like a mule and, all, and, and pull you with butts and, you know, put, put those bits in your mouth and pull you. He just, he just leads, guides, directs, you don't even know it, but you have been unconsciously led by the Spirit. Because the people whose hearts are open like that, just unconsciously led by your Spirit. Amen. But I do think it's fun to look back and say, I was unconsciously led by my Spirit. Amen. And look at what the Lord has done. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Remember, God said, if you be willing and obedient, yes. It's a willingness. He said, you'll eat the good one. Yeah. Lastly, we said it. We're not going to focus too much on it because we already know it. He is our guide through the word of God. So you know that 
and you've had this happen, we're going to talk about it, that you ever read something and it's something just jumps up at you. I know for me, it was when God first called me to the East Coast, he gave me a scripture out of Ezekiel 36. I was reading Ezekiel. Why I was reading it, I don't know, because I was very young in the Lord, and I'm not really good at the Old Testament at all, and still I'm not. And I've taken classes and the whole thing. Just, I'm not good at it. But he said to me something about this land that is desolate is going to become like the Garden of Eden, and the churches are going to be filled with flocks of men. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I was praying about whether or not I should move to the East Coast. Yeah. And that was my, it was lit up to me as a revelation. You ever read the word and it lights up? Yeah. It was that. So when I moved here several years later, I realized, you know what? There's the Garden State Parkway. <laughs> it's the main road that goes down the Garden State. Yeah, that's it. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You just can't make this stuff up. That's what makes walking with God so fun. Yes, it is. That's what makes being a child of God so fun. So why don't we take a break?